In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, today's reading, today's epistle reading from Romans 12, gives us a beautiful summary of the principles that we need in living the Christian life to use the gifts that we have been given, to love without hypocrisy, that is, to love without actions that would bring us under God's judgment. When it comes to other people, to be good to those other people with a love that we ought to expect from loving siblings. When it comes to other people also, to allow those around us to take the honours, to take the glory, even when it's not right or just but to, to allow that. But when it comes to ourselves, to flee from evil, to hold tightly onto good, to continue our prayer with joy in Christ, in the hope that we all have in Him, when difficulties come, to have patience. And if and when persecutions come, to even bless those who would do the persecuting. In short, St. Paul teaches us to diligently serve the Lord with fervour and without hesitation. Today, in a beautiful coincidence, we celebrate Saints Peter and Fabronia. We celebrate how they crossed class boundaries in their love for each other. We celebrate their devotion to each other. We celebrate how they provided an example both of Christian marriage and even of Christian rule. This celebration even offers us a counterpoint to Valentine's Day, which is theoretically about romance and even has Christian origins from the the saint saint who's named Valentine, but has has long since been corrupted into a celebration of the things that we can buy. Instead of this, the feast day of Saints Peter and Febronia gives us the opportunity to redirect our focus. The point of an Orthodox Christian marriage, and why it is that we don't just bless such a thing, but that we bring it in for and treat it as a sacrament, is so well demonstrated by Saints Peter and Febronia. The point of an Orthodox Christian marriage is to bring us to heaven. It's for this reason that there are marriages in our faith that, that, sorry, that marriages in our faith have restrictions on who can be married and who can't. It's about this self-sacrificial love that Christians are to have and are to have especially in their marriages. This is the foundation of how husband and wife are to be saved. And not only that, it is the basis of the spiritual life of any subsequent children. When we look to today's epistle reading, I hope that we will look first to apply this and to apply this to our own families and to our own household. Paul's words tell us today to flee from evil and hold tightly onto good. A very similar line to the psalmist, turn away from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it, is something that we sing every time we have a liturgy and joyfully so to remind us how important that this is. And there's many ways that we can put this into practice in our own lives. Perhaps it's being more conscious of what shows that we're watching. Perhaps it's watching them consciously and mindfully. Or perhaps, perhaps instead of allowing commercial entertainment to govern how it is that we relax, we can spend it in better pursuits. Pursuits that will develop us or pursuits that will bring us closer together as family. Paul's words tell us to have patience in difficulties. I suppose the the first line of this is that we do this by not cursing, in both senses of the word. And we build up more and more over time, accepting what happens to us, accepting what happens around us, accepting even what happens in faraway distant lands that we can't even possibly hope to influence until we are at the stage where we can even bless the one who has wronged us. After all, if we really think that they have wronged us, then they probably need the blessing. They probably need all the prayer, all the good that that is possible. Should we not be part of what brings good into the world? It's part of what we do as Christians, being the salt of the earth. 
Lastly, Paul's words tell us to diligently and fervently serve the Lord. And there's so many ways that this is possible. It begins with prayer and it escalates into the spiritual disciplines that, that we, we've heard about so often of fasting and charity and scripture reading and, and the sacraments. It, and it doesn't stop there either. It includes stewardship for what we have been given. These things would include children and church and our own gifts, our own abilities and talents. The first of those, which we draw out especially because of being St. Peter and Febronia Day, is, to, is the stewardship that we have for children. The stewardship that we have for, perhaps it's our own children, perhaps it's for children that we come into contact with. And especially for those who, who have the grace of having their own, what you're looking at is actually a form of evangelism. Because it, it seems like odd terminology, but how else do you describe it? How else would you describe passing on your faith to another? That is exactly evangelism. We don't think about this because it comes hopefully naturally to us. But that's what it is. It's a, a truism of sorts that children usually follow the actual beliefs, the lived beliefs of their parents. They follow what their parents' lives demonstrate. And it starts with really simple things. It starts with things like being in church and how it is that we show respect and reverence and prayer within, within the, the consecrated space that is a church. It's a week-by-week -week process of learning by proximity, of learning by showing and doing, sometimes with more success than others, and that's okay. That's the process part. Showing and doing, and that leads not just to these walls, but to all of life, to all of faith. How is it that we live this faith? How is it that we live out what we have received in, in today's liturgy through the rest of our lives, through the rest of our week, even through the rest of our day? How we do that is what we model to others. The second thing to, to bring up today is about the stewardship of a church building. We call this a temple. We call this a temple of God, and so we should. This, in particular, is one that is unique in this city. It's the, it's the one place where, we, um, where it is normal and normative that English is used, where we understand the, the language of the, the service all the words that are being said. And with the stewardship that we have, a stewardship is someone who, a steward, sorry, is someone who has the responsibility for something. Not the ownership, but the responsibility for something. And for us, our stewardship includes doing the best that we are able to while knowing that we will eventually be passing that on that we will be passing that on hopefully better than we found it. And so therefore, we do all that we can, all that we can to glorify God and to show our glorification of God to those around us, to anyone who passes by and to those who thank God for him. And finally, of the three, the gifts to build up the body of Christ. These are things that we have stewardship over. Paul gives a list. He talks about prophecy and ministry. He talks about teaching and preaching. He talks about giving, leading, and mercifulness. But it's not an exclusive list. Elsewhere, he gives other gifts. And as we can see, as we know through our experience in parish life, there are many, many more besides. Anything from baking to building encouragement such a great gift we've got a lot of no sayers in our world but we can contribute very strongly to the people around us by being someone who encourages by being like barnabas who was there to encourage paul 
through sharing the gospel and through so many others. The time wouldn't even allow me to go through all of the possible gifts that there are. And each of us has them. Sometimes we only know because other people will tell us, but each of, them, each of us has them. And this is how we are able to build up the body, to build up the body of Christ. We can't, all, we can't each of us have all gifts, but all of us may be able to have each of the gifts so that we all together as a community become that temple that is spoken about, that church that is spoken about, that each of us comprise a brick of, one building block after another, glorifying God with our bodies, with ourselves. So, in conclusion, there is so much that we have been given. How is it that we will demonstrate our gratitude to the Lord who has done so much? And how is it that we will do that this week? We have so many alternatives. So let us look for the things that he has given us. Everything that we have. Everything that we are. Everything, everyone that is around us. And let us look each in our own lives for how it is we are able to give back to the Lord. Amen.